You're listening to the Coconut Avenue Radio and Podcast Network. Welcome to Out There on the Edge of Everything, the show that examines, helps you understand, and effectively deal with the interesting edges of life. Broadcasting now from the virtual C344 studios overlooking the edge of Coconut Avenue is your host, award-winning and best-selling author, Dr. Stephen Lesovich. Hi, this is Dr. Stephen Lesovich out there in the edge of everything. This episode is entitled Interview with Mr. David Mariani of Basketball Diet Biology of the LA metro area. Welcome to the show, David. Thanks for having me. You're a celebrity fitness trainer and a strength and conditioning coach. What kind of services do you provide? Yeah, I do private, usually one-on-one training, sometimes group classes, mainly athletes, sometimes celebrity musicians, but I will be releasing a free program. Hopefully, I'll have it out before the new year. How has the personal training industry changed after COVID? Yeah, so COVID brought on the... A big push to go everything online, which was different for me because I'm used to everything in person. Uh, So for a lot of us that didn't grow up with social media, uh, we had to adapt quickly. And that was kind of how I started basketball biology was uh, Instagram first and all the other TikTok, YouTubes. Uh, So the, the free program will be the first step. And then I'll do online coaching, which is something I help build with another group. Uh, I'm up to date with what I need to do. Um, it's just getting all the the little things done. So the free program is the first step and let people see the program uh, and then offer the coaching. So COVID definitely pushed us to do everything online. Are you back in the gym as well with people or you're just exclusively doing training online right now? Yeah, I'm back in the gym. The, once they started opening up LA, uh, even before they started lo- opening up LA, even during the pandemic, I was seeing people in person. I was on the border of LA and Orange County, and Orange County could do outdoor gyms. LA shut everything down, but I, being on the border of Orange County, I would just take athletes into Orange County and train them even during pandemic. And now that it's open everywhere, uh, it's definitely, there's a resurgence to do in person. Many people make New Year's resolutions on January 1st. What advice can you give our listeners to make sure they are successful on achieving their New Year's resolutions? Yeah, I would advise to, you know, st- start with the little wins and embrace those because if you go for the the home run right away, you can burn out in that first couple of weeks and then you find yourself back at square one. So it's important to get the little wins and, and celebrate them and really embrace them and they will stack up over the year. You have started a movement of walking backwards and it's kind of catching on all over the country. What does it mean to walk backwards? Yeah, so essentially it's just walking in reverse. So it burns 40% more calories, increased neural pathway connections, strong, you get stronger, more flexible just by going backwards. And it helps offset not just the forwards movement, the forwards walking, but now that we're on phones, tablets, the computer, uh, whether we're working or we're children, it helps balance us. Now, do you specifically train any muscle groups for walking backwards? Yeah, you increase ankle mobility. You get the vastus medialis, which is the most protective quad muscle over the knee. And you also hit the glutes and it helps with posture as well. Are there any specific weight training techniques that you use to hit those muscles for your walking backwards movement? I really like uh adding resistance with the sled. And if the person can do that pain-free, I like to take it up a notch and jog if that can be done pain-free. I really like to sprint backwards. So when you're training people, how do you challenge them personally to achieve their goals? I assess where they're at. I find the level they can do. And it always starts with the backwards movement. So uh, back to my previous point, if they can walk backwards pain-free, I have them jog backwards. If they can do that pain-free, I have them sprint backwards. And by the time you're sprinting backwards, you can get a lot of work done in a little time. So is walking backwards just for professional athletes or can it help anybody at any level? Yeah, I've had my my nephews and nieces that are under nine years old. I have them go backwards and I've had people in their 80s go backwards. The one thing I would advise is if you're higher risk for fall to use a treadmill, go slow and hold on to the handles. So you're not having to worry about where you're walking and you can step to the side if it gets too intense. 
Now, the other day you posted a video where you showed your dad and your mom walking backwards. How did they like the technique? They looked pretty good doing it. Yeah, they liked the technique a lot. They uh, they started walking backwards about two years ago in their neighborhood. And so when I'm able to see them in person, I put them on the sled and that way we can get a little more resistance. And it's also fairly safe to do it on the sled as well because there's a harness around their back uh, and they're going slow and controlled and adding weight. And they like it a lot. And my dad's 75, my mom is 66. And they... Uh, uh, even in the short time that I was able to see them this last week over the holiday, they had remarked both of them that their their knee pain was gone. Today I'm speaking with David Mariani from Basketball.Biology of the LA metro area. David, you train professional athletes. Can you share the name of a few of the people you train uh, with our listeners? Yeah, I've uh, I've been lucky enough to to build my platform started with guys like Melvin Gordon when he was in high school, Trey Waynes when he was in high school. For those of our listeners who don't know, Melvin Gordon and Trey Waynes are professional football players in the NFL. Melvin Gordon played for the San Diego Chargers, Denver Broncos, and is now playing for the Baltimore Ravens. Trey Waynes played for the Minnesota Vikings and the Cincinnati Bengals. Corey Graham was a pro bowler from the Bears. I was training him as a 19-year-old kid, so I was able to get a good platform out of Chicago. And then when I got to L.A., uh, I built it up and uh, was able to train Spencer Dinwiddie, who plays for the Nets, Arike Ogubawale, she's uh, maybe the top basketball player for the women, Diplo, he's a DJ, popular one, Nicole Schwarzinger, uh, another popular uh, mass singer, uh, Judge, and yeah, there's a few others. Uh, Antonio Brown. Antonio Brown played for the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in the NFL. Yeah, that's uh, uh, L.A. is a is a hotbed for athletes and celebrities. So there's a little bit more I can do. And that was the, the purpose of moving out there three years ago uh, was to hit those people. Because with my social that I started two years ago, it's grown fast. And so they reach out through that. That's word of mouth and social media has been my biggest thing. Do you use any different techniques to train uh, the professional athletes or celebrities? The techniques I use with them are scaled. So they're the same techniques I use to train my parents, but it's scaled up because a lot of them are very, very high level. Even the musicians that tour, they, they're they they're very good athletes. They're used to being on a plane or traveling across the world. The physical demands of flying are very, very high. So I have them go backwards and, and offset the sitting. Uh, then I work uh, knees over toes, <clears throat> which is a little bit different than the science taught us. So I go, it's not that we only train knees over toes, we train knees behind the toes as well. Yeah, that's uh, uh, within those movements. They're unorthodox, but uh, they're very, very helpful. What is the most interesting thing you learned from training these professional athletes or celebrities? Probably the most interesting would be that, first, they're very nice people. Two, that they're because of the travel, they, they tend to be in need of answers right away. Uh, some of the younger athletes and their parents, they're kind of fighting the science, uh, this new science that's coming out with the backwards movement. These pro athletes and celebrities, they don't fight it. They need answers right away. So they, they're very, very quick learners. They ask very, very quick questions. They're very cerebral. What personally gets you out of bed in the morning, David? Well, what gets me out of bed is uh, I, I start with electrolytes in the morning with a, a liter of water. My passion to help others is mentally what drives me to continue to push for the athletes. And one thing that I, I always try to do is I never prescribe something to the athletes or teach something that I'm not currently doing. Uh, so my social media is up to date with everything that I currently do and everything that I currently coach. What is one thing you do on a daily basis that creates a positive impact in your own life? Well, there's a couple things. I, I journal, I meditate, but then I also walk backwards. Uh, I hit that sled every day backwards, and that creates a very positive impact on my life. What is one thing that you do on a daily basis that creates a positive impact in the life of others? Well, there's a couple things. I always make story posts and feed posts every day on my social media that I believe provide value to others and that creates a positive impact. And the feedback from people across the world has been great. Even today, I post on my story every day, a success story from somebody around because sometimes with myself and the pro athletes, they think it's unattainable. So showing that people of every age, every culture are getting results helps show the positive impact 
uh, for other people, not just myself. Where can people find you on social media? What are your social media identifiers? Yeah, it's always basketball.biology. YouTube is just basketball biology. Social media is uh, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Twitter, which I think now we're calling X, Facebook. And I believe you were on threads as well, right? Threads has grown fast. That's one that uh, I got to early. Uh, Threads, LinkedIn, it's all basketball biology. Is there anything else you would like our listeners to know about you or basketball.biology? That I would let them know that if they come to me and they message me directly that they're that they're heard. Uh, I do a lot of lives and answer questions that sometimes turn into more than just the physical training questions. And I would just reiterate that their thoughts and concerns are heard when they come to me. And I'm, re- I'm replying to them directly, even though following is growing and typically... Uh, when you see somebody with my following, they'll have people working on the so- social responding. But when they come to basketball biology, it's uh, directly replied and communicated through me. I've been speaking with David Mariani of Basketball.Biology of the LA metro area. Thanks for being on the show, David, and Happy New Year. Yeah, thanks for having me. and ha- Happy New Year. Until next time, I'm Dr. Stephen Lesovich, out there on the edge of everything. You have been listening to Out There on the Edge of Everything, the show that examines, helps you understand, and effectively deal with the interesting edges of life. For more information on your host, Dr. Stephen Lesovich, please visit slesovich.com. For more information on prior and future shows, please visit coconutavenueradio.net. This is the Coconut Avenue Radio and Podcast Network.